Charles, I started Aiken. Would I would love to talk to you about it. Yeah, just reach out to us. We're definitely going to try to create some grant programs for it. Do Peter Atia and David Seclair have different perspectives on how health should be described? Vitality versus longevity. Can't have a cake and eat it too. Would you be working? Uh, would you be open to working with Rejuve Biotech? Yeah, yeah, I have no problem working with any of these people, and I don't think um, they have different perspectives. I think the issue is translation of the work that they're doing to clinical trials that you can actually use on the patient. That is the rate limiter. So yeah, so it's great. You can have this epigenetic notion of aging and information notion of aging, and you show how you can make a mouse old and make a mouse young again, and they're twins, and that's just very convincing science. But the minute it touches you or me, you know, it touches us humans, you need FDA approval. You need to run clinical trials. And so that's why you start with the primary care clinic first and you build out a center of excellence and you have an image center and a very sophisticated laboratory that can do genomic sequencing and all these other things because you're verticalized to clinical trial and you can take best available research and then you can run placebo controlled uh, phase three clinical trials, uh, double blind trials, and you can run them. And it, my cost, for example, of doing an MRI once everything is all set up is like 40 bucks cost $1,200 to do an MRI if you're buying at retail. But I can do that for that price point um, for research because you know I have the text, I have the machine. It's the same for running a lab. It costs me like 25 cents for a CBC. Uh, if I was doing that retail, it's like 100 bucks. You know, it's, it's expensive stuff. Uh, full genome sequence is still a little expensive. It's like $300. It used to cost a billion dollars to sequence a full human genome. <laughs> and that price keeps going down. So verticalizing that stuff is great. And then when you do your clinical research, not only can you get really good data sets about the primary concern, you could actually start digging in into the genetic reasons why things were either less or more effective. For example, let's say we want to replicate some of the studies with resveratrol or um, NAD or any of these things. Okay, great. So we run it and there's something we're looking for. But, you know, we could find out if a person expresses a really particularly positive outcome, maybe they have a specific gene or there's a specific genetic expression. I can look into that because I have the full genome data and I can use AI uh, to basically just go through all of that in a matter of a day and come back with an answer about any of the patterns that they found. Another thing we're very interested in doing is bringing stuff that's on the fringe that really does work like photobiomodulation and transcranial magnetic stimulation and hyperbarics into medicine. Because when you bring those things in, you have decades, if not centuries, of, of good clinical evidence, but for whatever reason, it's been abandoned or ignored by modern medicine, and you potentially can cure stuff or at least dramatically reduce the effects of certain things. Like, I can't for the life of me understand why hyperbarics were not used with COVID treatment. You get patients, and they're having really a, a huge difficulty getting their pulse ox up. They're just about to get to a point where you have to put them on an, uh, a ventilator, why not treat them with hyperbarics? Every person I've seen that's gone down that road, it's been very good for them. Or ozone therapy is another example. They used to use that treaty Ebola. Did you guys know that? Yeah, you doctors listening right now, let me show you a little something. Ah, I got a paper for you. Ozone Ebola treatment. Yeah, how about this? Ba -ba -ba paper that crossed my desk not too long ago. Ozone and oxidation therapies is a solution to the emerging crisis in infectious disease management, a review of current knowledge and experience. How about that? Medicine faces a crisis of emerging superbugs, lethal viruses, and stealth pathogens such as tick-borne infection. Thousands are dying worldwide of once treatable diseases. Ozone therapy, extensively studied, may be a valuable adjuvant or standalone therapy. Ebola again ravages Africa Ra, ra, ra. And by the way, they used it on Ebola patients. So I will post a link to that. How about that? Why don't people use it? Because it's cheap and they haven't been able to find a way to patent it and the pill on it yet. Boom. How, oh, yeah, you're not going to go to that link. Just Google the uh, ozone and uh, oxidation therapies. Yeah, exactly. Allopathic medicine is not concerned with a cure. It's not profitable as a symptom management coming from a 20-year expert. You're 100% right. 